our motto is sweat now, shine later. Well, I was given the task to do this song. So, my song, our group song, entails everybody. So, we're going to bring a whole new vibe here. So, all I want all you to do is we swaying from left to right, left to right, left to right. And when I point at you, you're going to say, like yourself, three times. So, every time I point at you, you will say, Good. As no Patrice Roberts, and I definitely ain't Marshall, and I don't own the copyrights to this song. Trust you. Put any disclaimer out there early. So I'm going to say the words so I'm going to say the words slowly first. So you will hear what the words are and then I will sing it in tune. So we say Is on the top? <laughs> Look where we reach again. End up in our workshop for nine days from now. Even though we'd rather be by the beach or in a lime or spending some time with the family. So we go run up and down the track to find out that we already like it. And if we make a friend with everybody inside here, we go. We go learn about techniques and the right way to execute it. And if we make a friend with everybody inside, here we go. Good. So we're ready. We sway in. Left, right, left, right. Come on. Come on. Sway. Get in the rhythm. Mm -hmm. Move your body. So we say, look where we reach again. End up in a workshop for nine days from now. Even though we'd rather be at the beach or in a lime or spending some time with the family. So we go run up and down the track to find out that we already like it. And if you feel and if we make a friend with everybody inside here, we go. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So we go learn all the techniques and the right way to execute it. And if we make a friend with everybody inside here, we go. Uh-huh. Uh huh. And we go pray for a salary increase. <laughs> all right, all right, excellent, excellent. Like yourself, like yourself, like yourself. All right. You like the last one? Catchy, catchy. Like yourself. All right. GC Foster College is pleased to be here. Right? We are pleased to be here. And it's important that you know that after this capacity building, you can further launch out to explore all the opportunities at GC Foster College. Let me see those who are on Instagram. All right, so I see more than 10 hands. So I want you to take out your phone. I want you to go onto Instagram and I want you to type in GC Foster College. GC Foster College, as it is, type it in on Instagram. You don't have Instagram? Now it's time to get it, right? You're going to get it today. So once you have it on your phone, GC Foster College, I want you to pull it up. The background picture is one that says sport management. Have it up. All right, so I just want you to click follow. I want you to all follow GC Foster College. So let's go. So just click the follow button. I'm seeing a lot of blue. I just want you to go ahead and follow GC Foster College. And in a quick nutshell, I'm just going to tell you about the different programs that we offer. All right? So we offer a diverse sport and educational program where you can study to become either a physical education teacher, persons in Jamaica, they explore becoming sport administrators, professional coaches with different areas of specialization, fitness and sports massage therapists. So those are, are our core course, courses. We also have short courses, which runs for six weeks. So if you're here and you're interested in becoming a sports massage therapist in six weeks, let's have a talk. If you want to become a certified fitness instructor in six weeks, let's talk. When I finish, I want you to say, let's talk. If you want to do something in strength and conditioning, if you want to do anything as it relates to coaching, Let's go. if you want to become a sport administrator, Let's go. 
if you want to become anything in sport to improve the capacity, all right, or to work on improving any area within your high schools, within your sport administration, within your coaching areas of specialization, let's, let's talk, all right. So it's important for you to know that we're here to grow together, all right? So in the future, we can say this was impactful, all right? So at this time, I am going to ask, today's a very interactive session, you know, and I have some giveaways, and I love to give away, all right? So we have one giveaway, and I'm going to ask one participant. So this is for you now. I am going to give you the token, and you are going to ask a question. It can be related to what you would have learned yesterday. If you think you learned something in EC that somebody in primary may want to know and didn't get to know, or someone in secondary learned and didn't get to know, all right, you're going to ask that question. So who wants to give away my giveaway for me? Anybody? All right, so you're going to ask a question to your colleagues. Yes, you decide the question. So here is it. All right, two minutes. All right, anyone else? You want to? All right, so you're going to ask a question to your colleague. And if they have the right, you have the answer, Anna. You have the question, you have the answer. Yes. Here. I, all, all I have is the token. All right? Yes. So you're going to ask a question, and you're going to get the answer, and you give away the token. Okay, um, morning. This is for the, not the primary, the coaches or the teachers, not the primary, but the secondary. Um, when, when, when young, young athletes or young athletes are transitioning from primary to secondary, how do we prepare them for sports? What are the type of exercise are we going to implement with them, sorry, where, where their fitness and their strength is, is concerned? Okay, what type of exercise would you use from a primary to a secondary that transitioning into an older age group? What type of exercise will you encourage this person, this, art, this young athlete to do? Don't let us say body weight. Don't let us say body weight. What did it, that's it. Thank you very much. All right, thank you. So, so we're going to be sharing what we learn in our different practical sessions or our different sessions among each other, all right? With a token as a reward. At this time, you're going to be hearing from Dr. Dawkins, who will come to you, and then we're going to get straight, straight into our presentation. All right. Good morning, all. How are you feeling good? Yeah. If you're feeling good, turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, I am feeling great. Yeah. You look great. You look alive. You look animated, enthusiastic, energetic. And we're going to have a great day, as Corona said. By the way, did you formally meet Corona, Gregory? You were introduced to her initially on the first day. But guess what happened? Caroni is a graduate of GC Foster College. Yeah? She has those great qualities of GC Foster College, right? She's a lecturer, but she's so diverse, creative, that we have put her in marketing and promotion. And you saw evidence of her dynamism, her creativity, and all the great things. She's another great one. So you have met one great one, and this is another great one, Corona Gregory. All right, guys, 
we're here to have fun and to learn. We don't want your assessment, your culmination assessment to be burdensome, to be strenuous, to be stressful, to cause you not to sleep well, right? Yeah. To cause you to have any conflict with anyone. So we are going to make it very manageable and practical. Now, as a teacher, there is something called metacognition and self-regulation, right? Mm -hmm. So we, the trainers, have self-regulated by having professional conversation regarding your culminating activity. And we have decided to make it a little different, a little more practical, so that we can just check you off very quickly and there is no problem. So Mr. Steve Davis, another great one, will come to you later today to describe that culminating assignment, all right? But the reflection assignment, the journaling continues and it's still relevant, okay? So have a great day, over back to Karoni. All right, at this time, with no further ado, you're going to be hearing from our specialist in the area of event planning or as it relates to periodization, and we're going to be linking it to the Jamaican context. But not only that, you will be able to understand how your system is able to basically integrate the intended training program for your specific area. So these presenters will be Mr. Marlon Gale and Miss Janelle Smith and team, where we will have persons providing the content to you within the different contexts. Thank you very much for your time, and I'll now turn over to our presenters. Thank you very much, Ms. Gregory. Morning, everyone. I like how we started this morning with that sort of high spirit. Um, and of course, the conversations will continue even after this presentation, because what we're about to share as a team, certainly that's what happens in our context. But we would also like to know what happens in your context and to see the blue, your blueprint and our blueprint how it can assist each other to be greater. All right, so <clears throat> our topic this morning is periodization in the Jamaican context. And of course, our, sorry, our theme and our topic is understanding your system. Let's, let's let that soak in a little bit. Planning and then planning your intended program. I decided to do that sort of collage to really capture um, some of the things that happens in our system of track and field. They say a picture <coughs> states a thousand words, but I probably could say that's a library or an encyclopedia, right? Because it gives, it gives an example. The picture show um, from, for most of the program, we start on the grass, and of course, all championships would be done on a synthetic track. It shows, for example, the middle picture with the lane markers, it shows that even at certain, at the different levels, the child is facilitated, taught exactly how to perform and execute within a competitive situation. And of course, we have at the bottom the celebratory moments of our basic school champion, primary school champion, and our two recent <coughs> high school champion, that's Kingston College and Heidel. We will talk furthermore about Heidel later because what they have achieved is also historic as it relates to track and field. And last but not least, we have two of our legends who would have gone through the same system. And it shows how the system at best tries to structure so that you can move from grassroots to greatness. And that's Mrs. Shelley and Fraser Price and you see in bold, right? So the presentation <coughs> seeks to give an overview of Jamaican track and field, of course, in the Jamaican context, driven by tradition, it embodies the system of identification, selection, and importantly, the development of talent, how that is achieved. And of course, key to this success 
coaches and teachers the depth of knowledge or the repository of knowledge that is required for these very important persons to achieve the intended plan. To achieve athlete development, that's through the different levels, in order to attain performance. Also, these, once these talents are identified, they are further nurtured to the different stages of development, um, adhering to certain scientific principles. Of course, these product um, endeavors to improve the throughput of track and field at each level. The more you improve the throughput at each level, then ultimately, from a national standpoint, you will be able to produce a lot more formidable athletes. And this is something that would have happened <clears throat> based on the foundation that was laid from the 1940s supported by several essential stakeholders. And when we talk about stakeholders, we talk about from our ministry, to the schools, to the parents, to the coaches, to the sponsors. None of this would be possible without that sort of setup. And I must say, this is not something that we got in one day. It is over 100 years of consistent trying, and we're perfecting it. So. Mr. Angus would have spoken about WD-40, failing 39 times, and you got it on the 40th attempt. We are still not perfect, but one of the good things is that it is getting better. And I want to emphasize on one final thing, tradition. It doesn't matter how qualified you are. It doesn't matter your depth of knowledge. Tradition and culture is something many times that supersedes it, 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 it has to do with the motivation, right? And every country, in particular, have aspects of tradition and culture that it, it gives a different vibe to how those persons would pretty much um, function, and tradition has played a key role. In this session, we really want to learn how to use the system of competition, guided by our, by our calendar of competition, um, how to draft, plan the intended program, and of course, learn how to do that for different age groups, and engender paradigm shift up towards new development in the sport of track and field. Because really and truly, the success of this ultimately will be a paradigm shift as it relates to sport. And of course, as you would have attained greater success at the different levels. Of course, we know when you build a house, your foundation has to be solid or everything else would crumble. Now, there are some key vocabularies that we want to go over because I don't want us to misinterpret the term periodization. Now, we are approaching this from three different positions. Number one, chronologically. Just like you'd have learned in histor history class, history is captured in capsules so that the reader can better understand what took place. And therefore, as we are sharing periodization in the Jamaican context. We want you to know what happened at each level and what has been happening at each le level because we have over 100 years of experience. We want to take in consideration also the athletic development, what takes place, and of course, the plan. The one that everyone is always excited about. How do we do these structures in order to attain the results we want? System of competition, each competition has its format, the different, the, the, the type format, the different event groups that is offered at these competitions. Um, the identification of talent, very important. This has to do with what? Potential detected. We use the term coaching eye. Every single one of you sees sport, view sport different from the regular person watching it from their coach at home. There are certain things that are embedded and of course, you'd have gained that through experience and your philosophy. Therefore, it is detected, it is identified. From there, you move on to what? The selection of talent, where you are able to make decisions based on what? Scientific principles, based on experience, and of course, your predictions. As we'd have spoken yes, uh, about champs prediction yesterday, in most cases, the predictions are very close, right? Even if the team doesn't win, they are not far off. They um, the predictions that many persons who study the system um, and would have observed over the different meets. 
Then we move on now. If you identify the talent, you select it, you have to ensure that it is developed. And in developing the talent, you want to ensure that you have the appropriate environment in which that talent is being developed. You must have the knowledgeable and experienced team to ensure that that is achieved. And of course, they must be goal-oriented. An athlete might not spend all their time with you based on the different stages of development. But your objective is to ensure that whenever that athlete leaves, they are ready for the next level. Because we know as teachers and coaches is one of the biggest flaws in our system. You realize you have to go back to go forward a lot in many cases. And that has to do with what happened prior to that. And of course, longevity is essential because that is when you're going to know if the product you have created would have truly stand the test of time. There's another part to identification, selection, and development of talent. And it is talent transfer. I put it in that category particularly because it is essential that when you develop the talent, that talent can make the transition through the different um, stages. And of course, that has to also do with long-term athletic career, longevity, being relevant, being competitive. And of course, with that, you'd have gained some amount of success. And essentially, that cannot be achieved without good health and fitness. Human performance, a term I like to use, but when we say human performance, we're talking about the, from the physical standpoint. And that has to do with your athleticism, motor performance. Not everyone has the same motor performance. This is more so on the genetic side, or it can also be trained, right? And then resilience. And then finally, our associations play a key role in governance, most of the persons in our association are volunteers. So it's not, they are not all paid posts. That's the reason why I said tradition and culture. And of course, that is at all levels where we give our student athletes an opportunity to transit from grassroots to greatness. So a general concept of the plan. It is of paramount importance, and you, I'm sure you all do it, that you identify the needs of the athlete. Right? No two athletes is the same. Therefore, some might need more of one and the other. It is important that that is identified. So even when the plan is done and is being executed, um, the program is being executed, you want to ensure that those individual needs are met over time. At times, you might find persons that might level up, but of course, you cannot forget. And of course, after identifying it, it is important to assess. You might see something, but it doesn't manifest itself in numerical term. A young man might look fast to you. You take the time to find out how fast you are, for example. Of course, it's important to have your objectives well-defined for your plan as it relates to the different stages um, of your plan. And of course, from there, you move on to designing the, what the plan is. Remember, you're still in the process of conceptualization, right? You have not written the exact exercise or, pro or session in detail as to what the individual will be doing. But you know, based on the needs you have seen, based on the assessment you have done, that there are certain things that you need to do in order to make your program as prescriptive as it should be. Just imagine you go to the doctor, and the doctor use a drug and give you more milligrams that you're supposed to get, then you're in trouble. So you want to ensure that all the necessary assessments are done at best. Because I'm, I'm sure many times you might not have all the resources, but you have the scientific knowledge to guide you in that process. Then after you design, you develop the program. That is the detailed version. And then of course, this cannot be successful unless you have systematic evaluation at strategic points of your program in order to, to know, am I where I'm supposed to be? Am I too far ahead? Or I am exactly where I'm supposed to be? How are you going to ensure that that happens? By data gathering, consistent data gathering that would have happened between sessions, after competitions, etc. All right? Now, in conceptualizing the training plan, 
your system of competition as it relates to timeline supported by your calendar of competition is going to tell you, okay, if I'm working at the primary level, if, if I'm working at the preschool primary, or I'm working at the secondary level, or senior, okay, what competition is the main one? How many am I going to compete at before the main competition? Some athletes need to compete more than others. Others don't need to compete as much. You have to ensure every day as you get to know your athlete more, you know exactly how best to prepare them for your championship. That is not something that I can teach you, but I can remind you, always observe those indicators. Of course, the level of development um, is essential um, for the athlete. Now, you're getting now to the, the, the why, the reasons as to why I'm going to do this plan. A plan makes no sense without a reason. A plan makes no sense if you don't have something competing for. And that's the reason why the system of competition guided by the calendar of events makes so much sense. So your rationale. Based on what are you going to write this program? What have you seen? What have you observed? What have you assessed on, on this group of athletes? Now, some persons might work with athletes, a group with younger ones and older ones. You have to take in consideration. How do you structure your plan? Do you do two different ones? Or you do one taking in consideration the stage of development those individuals are. Because if you throw everyone in the same pool, you're going to get in trouble. It is very hard, especially when you have a big team. So let me give you an example. <clears throat> Outside of being a lecturer, I'm the head coach for one of the, the most powerful schools in Jamaica, likewise, St. Diego High. And when you start the season, for example, with over 120 boys, it is very difficult for our coaching staff to get all of that. One of the things I've ensured, though, our coaching staff has, have at least eight coaches. So you have someone who caters for every group of events, but not every training program has so many coaches. Sometimes you have one doing almost all events. And many times you don't get the attention you need. So that's the reason why you ensure that the staffing is like that. So it's important that that happens. Your plan comes from your rationale. So remember, your rationale is the reason why you're doing the plan. OK, you have realized that an individual in the last championship would have had certain issues. So the finishing of the race, they might need to develop more what? Strength endurance, speed endurance, and other components. Then, of course, you make your plan as a, as a result. So at any point, you might seem to forget, or you might see certain things not adding up. You can go back to your rationale. Right? And then, of course, the detailed version of the program is going to tell you exactly what is going to be done over a period of time. You know, everyone here know that, for example, your macro cycle is broken down into meso cycle. Excellent. I don't have to go through that. I'm so happy. Right? And the fact that you, when you have your program, of course, the detailed version tells you how each microcycle comes to a conclusion, how each mesocycle comes to a conclusion, how each phase comes to a conclusion, and how each period comes to a conclusion. So you're able to measure exactly what the, the, the athlete is doing and to ensure that you're on target. I had to put in the last two. Team. Many times we do the plan. Excellent plan. Perfect assessment and everything done. But you don't Take in consideration who are the persons that are going to help you to make sure that plan becomes a reality. Because the success of the plan comes from the team, a team that is motivated. The team is not motivated and knowledgeable and are patient as it relates to the progression in terms of fitness of the athlete. Taking in consideration, we, we had the discussion about puberty. You have to understand and know when to back off. Previous presentation from Mr. Wilson through Mr. Angus spoke of what? You have to know when to rest. You have to know when to do certain things. And of course, the scientific background helps you to identify some of these issues that the youngsters might have. And finally, the facilities. If the facilities are not appropriate, then of course, we have to improvise. Now, I remember we were talking about equipment and so forth. 
one of the things that GZ fosters with our students in specialization and even going on teaching practice, not every school have everything. They either purchase or they make it. And you'll be surprised to know how some of them are very creative in doing so. And it's part of the reason why we have attained the level of success. So we, are, we go further in identifying the needs to better prescribe the plan. So even though you have all of that general in information, right, you still have not tied down exactly what this athlete need and what that athlete need, right? So you have to take in consideration the individual. No two individual is at the same level of development, right? And if you're working with a group, you have to take, you also to take that in consideration. The biological age of the individual, two 12 year olds might be at two different stages. One far more developed than the other. One have more physical abilities than the other. You have to identify that. The training age, how long this individual has been engaging in physical activities, in training, in sports, etc. But the experience, is, the training experience is a, is a very important one. It's similar to training age, but it is really what have you achieved over the period of time that you have been, you have been training, right? And then, of course, it's important for each individual, the assessment data. Remember, we talk about data gathering. You always ensure you have that for each individual because that's how you're going to be able to answer certain questions later when you might find that certain things are not going accordingly, right? And of course, linked to the biological age, individual and group grouping. I know your athletes run in class, right? Our age group, right? We call it class. The event you have to take in consideration, the fitness level. So you might have the same group, but they're at different fitness level. Do you allow them to train together? Or you let them train otherwise? Because if one is here and one is here, and you put them there, and you say, okay, this one is going to pull that one, it might not be the very best thing, because it means that one will always be working outside of their comfort zone, and therefore can cause them to peak early, can cause them to get injured, and a multiplicity of other things. And of course, you take in consideration the gender. Now in Jamaica, no, this is where the historical um, aspect comes in. To, to understand how to plan, you must know your system. While we do this, what I want you to do in the back of your mind, of course, all of you here are fully off okay with your system because we're going to do a comparison to see the pros and cons for each and see how best later we can create something better progressively. So we have the preschooler, we have the preparatory and the primary. Now, the preparatory is the private schools at the primary level. And of course, we have the primary schools that are the public schools. Secondary, we have senior elite, and that is for clubs and institutions. Now, sports program description. To give an idea what happens at each level. So the preschooler, we call it basic school. They engage in sports-related events. Game, remember we have been talking about the fun factor right throughout from the PE class to the actual sporting activity. And of course, games also that are related. It is exploratory. They get an opportunity to work in a multiplicity of areas and activities that are linked to many, many of the sports because really and truly at that time, you don't know who is who. Because everyone wants to have fun. Your instructions are not as such that they are specific, but it is geared towards the child having fun and play. The primary and preparatory is regulated. You have to ensure, based on the, the level of development, that the youngsters are not working as if they are level up. You understand? We know that from time to time, these things might be violated, and as a result, the results show either quality performance early, and then nothing later, or you get hurt. But we try our very best to ensure that that is regulated. And part of the way it is regulated, our competitions ensure that they don't run over certain distances. It is developmental because the individuals still have not identified who they're going to be in terms of athlete. They might have ability in many areas. But later on, when we talk about the selection and identification, we might move to that. And then you start to identify select possible
talent um, areas that they'd be linked with. We move on from that to the secondary. Now, for the secondary, it is more organized, it is more structured, because you have a wider pool of events that student athletes, for example, would participate in. That is where you, you identify, develop, and for talents, you know, sometimes you might not have captured everything in the primary school system. This is the opportunity where you catch them before they move the, to the senior level. Because then, if they move to the senior level, it is going to be a harder task. So you try your best to ensure that the coaching is active right throughout the process. And then, at the end of secondary, then that's where your initialization to specialization come. What happens there? You drop some events and start to focus on some core events. Because that's the reason why, at the senior level, it becomes specialized. Unless you are a decathlete or epathlete, you will always continue to work, improve your craft in the different events that you do for those. Now, the sports program structure. Ladies and gentlemen, from grassroots, the, the school's administration plays a key role. If for every successful program in Jamaica, will that be the preschooler right up to the secondary level. The success of the program starts with your school's administration. If they are not sports oriented, if they don't understand the importance of sports, it is going to be a challenge for everybody else. I heard some of our um, discussions yesterday, and um, there are some things that I wanted to say, but I decided to wait for this morning. So your minds are a lot fresher. One of the most important benefits of physical education, when a child starts high school at 11 or 12 years old and leaves at 19, for most of them, that is the healthiest period of their lives. And you always have to credit yourself for it. Because after that, it is based on what you have taught them would have inspired them to continue to live a healthy, and healthful lifestyle, even if they don't choose sports as a career. The physical education teacher, trained by our institute institution, G.C. Foster, plays a key role in working with recruiters for selection um, for internal and external recruitment, because yes, recruitment starts at that level. So we were asking, how do we inspire our females to participate in sports? When you make sports fun from this level, everything that an adult does, it is because it has been the most in inspirational moment of their life. If they like to play football, cricket, whatever the sport is, if they like to party, it's because that is something that they learn. So the thing is, how do you make that change? You make that change through starting from early and inspiring them. Our support staff, our parents at all levels are the pioneers. They are at every chat meet. Many times our parents are the ones that cover for the teachers in the school system. So they are always there volunteering. The management of each school program, the parents are integral in that. And bear in mind, the parent doesn't always have to have a child on the team. You have lovers of the sport like that, that are there. So once you are a parent for a child on the team, you are the parent for every child on the team. You look out for everybody, all right? Now, <clears throat> this preschooler, the Institute of Sport, which is an arm from the Ministry of Sports, plays a key role in um, unearthing talent at the different levels. So they are one. So they are in charge of the basic school athletic championship that caters from three to six. The last championship, we had approximately 60 schools out of 280. So this is also to show you that we have not even scratched. Imagine we have, if we have greater participation. Right? The amount of athletes that would be moving up. But with that, we have, a, we have attained a lot of success. 
1,200 participants were there, and that happened over a three-day period, three to six. All right? So we're going to look at a little video here to show you the, especially the grandstand of the stadium is jam-packed with parents, kids, teachers, and other supporters. Um, not getting the audio. So remember, we talk about sports-related activities. So they are not all getting out. There's no blocks or anything like that. Very important. Go back. You want to go then? All right, go, go back to the first one, sorry. What I can tell you, if you notice... It was a near capacity grandstand for day two of the three-day championship held at the National Stadium, which has attracted a record 2,670 athletes from 89 participating schools, 29 more than last year. It's safe, it's safe. Because they are, they are even, some persons are even expressing what they intend to do coming next year. So it's like they are, they are already putting in their, their method in place, greasing the wheels, and looking at how they can attack it coming next year. As you know, from you see Bolt came into the track and field, everybody wants their son or their daughter to be sprinters. So we're going to have that. Have more schools, but I think those schools, they don't know about this championship as yet. On the track, it's very close with Citizens Advisory, Torrington and St. Francis are the joint leaders on nine points going into Friday's final day. However, Torrington's coach, Damian McLean, is confident that his team will retain their title. I'm well confident in a couple of finals. Um, Our student of GZ Foster, my student. It was a near capacity grandstand for date. All right. So three things jump out at me. First, from the early stages, who do you include? The media. Everybody knows. Even if you never got a chance because you probably was at, you were at work, you get to watch it on YouTube because it is there. And of course, every parent in, from every, and of course those in the diaspora want to see their, their niece, nephews running and so forth. The second thing, you would have seen the officials play a key role in the, competitive, uh, in the competition where they give them instructions they further reinforce remind them because you're actually preparing them from this stage for the bigger stage later right and of course you would have seen the inspiration based on what our senior athletes would be doing would have been a part of that motivation so if you include the media from early everybody's gonna want to be there there are many other videos where we could have had um interview oh hold on this is another one Oh, yes. So that's the boys' class with obstacle. Number two. And they are very, very competitive. Very competitive. He's guiding him too. All right. Right, don't worry, he's gonna get up. He's, he's, he's finishing that race. He's finishing that race. Yeah. 
I, I like this one. This young man is going to fall, but look how quick he gets up. The one in the black. All right, on the ground. Up. Finish line. I can tell you, the parents is going to be there to give support. So this is the introduction to the hurdle. And let me tell you, the finish line is a must. Finishing. It's one of the things also that they are taught. You finish your event. All right? And that is from three to six years. As I said before, I could not have included because you wouldn't finish the videos because they do interviews at that level. All right? Can go to the... So, like the presentation. so we move on now to the preparatory level. If you notice, the support system for the student athlete progressively gets bigger, somewhat mimicking what we call the orbital method. And this has to do with what these groups do to ensure the success of the student athlete. And of course, making the student athlete experience um, a lot easier in certain areas because School administration would have spoken about that already, right? The physical education teacher now at this level works with the coach, or the physical education teacher is the coach, because one of the, one of the benefits of GC Foster, if you do your bachelor's in physical education, you leave with two. You can teach and you can coach, or you can do the coaching program just the same, right? And one, one of the things you'll find, the coach might be seasonal at this stage which means that the coach only comes when track season starts or would have been moving around, working with recruiters to recruit students outside the school from other schools and also um, within the school. And the, a lot of the recruitment also internally takes place, of course. In our physical education class, one of the things they embark on, especially at the prep level, well, at all level, is the balance between academics and athletics. Of course, everyone is not gonna be perfect, but the necessary remedial system will be put in place to ensure that they level up. Because remember, for champs, there is an academic requirement. So it's not a case where we are, we are preparing thoroughbreds, and all they do is respond to instructions and run or jump or throw. We are, we are, we are also contributing to the holistic development of future pioneers. The student welfare, most of these schools have guidance counselors. Um, there's the feeding program and so forth, just to ensure that the student, um, ex student athlete experience is one where no one is really left behind. And of course, the support staff, main persons, our parents, and so forth, all right? Now, for the national sports program structure, we have the Jamaica Independent School Association, that is GISA. Remember, preparatory is private. They are in charge of the prep championship, age group 6 to 12. The last championship, 45 schools out of 324 registered schools. The championship, however, catered for more than 3,500 participants, and that is over a three-day period, right? Why three days? The, athlete, the student athlete gets enough time to rest, and they are not able to compete in too many events either, because we have to take in consideration we're there. Go ahead, sir. Question. Um, <laughs> does this sector compete by itself or with everybody else? No, they compete here. The, the, the prep school, they oh. <laughs> No, because you're saying it's private. Mm -hmm. Does this sector compete with the whole of Jamaica um, competition? At, at the secondary level. Oh, at the secondary level? Yes. Okay, oh, that's a question. Ma uh, mainly at the secondary level. There are a few development meets where you might find primary schools bringing in their relay team or prep schools bringing in their relay team. All right? We have another question. Sir Angus, can you help me out here? 
You said there's a limit. What's the limit that you put on the primary school as far as the number of events? The number of events, you will not find someone competing in more than three over three days because it's normally heat and finals or time finals, for example, during the... During the no, no, no. No, not three individual events. It, naturally, the faster persons would be a part of the relay. You understand? Um, and, of course, as I said, spacing out the days gives them more time to rest so they don't turn up too tired. All right? Yeah, um, question here. Oh, one what, more. Sorry about that. Um, when they say over 3,500 participants, is this just the athletes alone or is it athletes and... Athletes, people. that's athletes. Alone. Alone. Wow, okay. Thank you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, so this is one of the 100 meter finals for prep champs. Um, class three, that is, uh, what, nine years old, I think. So you notice they get used to being introduced, just as you would have said. So it's something they get used to over time. Standing fast. That? That's up here in shouting. <laughs> they get so excited. The same setup here, the starter, all right? Okay, so that's just a sneak peek. Remember, there are many other events um, that they will participate in. You'll learn a little bit more later. So we can move on to the, the next one. Now, this video, I think, was very important. Ah, yes. Skip the first one. Turn it on. It's the first time that the championship has been held uninhibited since COVID-19, and coaches are happy that the preparation for this year's meet has gone more smoothly than last year. Um, last time when COVID was around, preparation was, I, I mean, a, a little, you know, behind, uh, because if we didn't get the kids until later on when they say, well, champs can keep, so, you know, preparation was behind. But we get a chance now to start a preparation from early and it's a good look um you realize i've had some events that i've never normally come to this meet and dominate or in the top three and you know so and like the jumps and, and support i'm up in those and, and you know i'm doing up pretty well on the track also and what you'll also find is that there'll be more teams coming out this year than who participated last year because last year was kind of rushy and all of that but i think more teams are prepared this year and things are getting back to norm so Having the regular prep champs is one of those things that helps to get things back to norm. I have a pretty good shot. In fact, everybody have a pretty good shot. But um, we have an outstanding shot at the championship. We are, we are giving it a try. Vast preps Zane Joshua May, who won the 60 and 100 meters, as well as the long jump, was the top male performer in the 8 to 9 age group, tallying 27 points. I feel very good. And I hope to get more gold medals in the future. 
All right. Call, talk to the boys. Right there. So you see, all right, one of the reasons why I selected um, this video, it captures what happened in, in um, COVID. And post-COVID, our coaches were still so, uh, they were so motivated in getting back um, on track as it relates to developing youngsters, continuing um, the progression of the program. Because we know for COVID, when you are inactive, it affects the stage of puberty. In fact, we mentioned that in one of, one of the discussions. Please remember, as much persons died in COVID because of inactiveness and not exercising, not walking, as they would have from the virus. It shows how important physical education is as it relates to the existence, the health of the human being, all right, or of man, of all of us. Now, primary level becomes a little bit more complex. Still, school administration plays a key role. Now we start to develop more so a coaching staff. We tend to have more coaches that work with each program at the, the primary level because the primary level is far more rigorous, it's far more complex. Trust me, you will see at the end of the primary. Of course, our physical education teacher also work in tandem with the, the coaching staff in the recruitment, um, internal and external um, aspect of it. And of course, this is where we start to now balance academics with athletics more because this one is far more rigorous. The support staff continues to play the roles that they play in, in a, even in a more significant way. And of course, this, the school plays their part as it relates to the student welfare. Now, let's start phase one. The Jamaica Teachers Association <coughs> works with the, the district association. So each district association has a president, vice president, and a sports coordinator for each DA. We have 14 parishes with three to eight DAs. Each DA can have up to nine schools or more. There are, school, there are DAs, district association, with up to 20 odd schools. Number three, Trelawney. You remember the presentation? Who came from Trelawney? All right, you see him vote. And he's from that, he's from that DA. No. For the 14 parishes, we have 77 DAs representing over 700 schools. And of course, you're going to have 77 DA Sports Day interacting with over 10,000 athletes at that level. That's why I say it's more rigorous. All right? Each of these is a one day event. Go ahead. Oh, hold on. On. I think. Uh, yeah. The district association mm -hmm. that's run by the government or by the school? Teachers. 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 They're run by teachers. Yes. Right, so that district is like a, a small town in Jamaica, basically. No, no, no. So the DA, no, is a community. So say for example, this the space, community, right. you, you so might have a school here, one over there, one over there, right. and so they the, form a. They, so they the teachers are actually control the teachers. Yeah. Teachers, not just physical education teachers, teachers, but the P teacher, teachers play a more significant role in, um, in, in coordinating that aspect of it, supported by the administration of each institution. institution. Yes, I know. <laughs> All right? Now, <clears throat> it's a one day event. Yes, sir. Yes. Right, so the JTA, as you would have seen, Jamaica Teachers Association, representing teachers. That's the reason why I say it's run by teachers. Um, all right, so <clears throat> participants for each DA might range, based on the size of the DA, between 250 to 600 athletes, not parents. The parents are added after. <laughs> all right? Now, after you'd have had 
your DA sport. Now you move on to the parish championship run by the Jamaica Teachers Association. Now this is where teams selected from the 77 DA and of course they would come to the parish level. All 14, um, 14 parishes um, participants ranging from to 250 to 600. Oh, I didn't even realize, right. Um, and then from here, can go to the next slide. We have now the Institute of Sport. You'd have seen them before. They are in charge of the regional championships. Bear in mind now, two, two separate entities, but they are working for the same goal. So after you have the Paris Championship, you're going to have the regional championship run by InSport. Eastern, Eastern, Western, Central, the participants naturally at that stage is going to increase. That is done over a three-day period. So at particular stage, you're going to have a three-day championship that prepares you for the championship finals for InSport, which is this one. After you have the regional, you have the championship finals. 130 schools went for the last one, over 6,000 participants over three days. It is the same list of events re for regional that you compete at the championship final. And of course, yes. Right? Then now, after that, we go now to the primary school's championship. Now, after the in-sport primary championship final, I think you have approximately two weeks. And then moving from the parish finals for this, it comes after in sport. So you have the same age group as the preparatory. Um, what happens here, however, it is 14 combined teams. So schools in each parish comes here. Represented by parish. Now you look at the number, over 1,100 athletes. What you would have seen from the early stages, you start with a larger pool, and from that pool, the system gradually extracts the best of the best. Now, bear in mind, there's a trick to this. There's a trick to this for our recruiters. Not all schools are some of the best athletes turn up. At, it doesn't mean you have to compete at all levels. Because sometimes, schools recruiting realize that this young man is good. You don't need to go to any more championship. You wait here and prepare for the next, the next level, right? So there is that strategy in that part as it relates to recruiter because recruiting at this level is a big thing. It's a big thing. Give you an example. You have a child that is exceptional. Within one week, five schools can turn up at the home and they are going to sell their institution. And I'm talking about the secondary level. They are going to come to you and tell you all why my school it's kind of like you're moving from high school to a, to a university abroad. They are going to give you their package, <clears throat> right? It's very competitive. Many times there is a shift between what the father wants and the mother wants and so forth, and it makes it. But guess what? It helps the child later on to make better selection when they're moving on to, to universities abroad. So it also prepares you for that. <clears throat> So we're going to have a few um, videos. Oh, again. Skip to the... Oh. All right. You want to? So we decided not to just show you running. Um, this is an high jump competition. So <clears throat> this young man, <clears throat> this is his third attempt. And look at him after clearing it. They are serious about competition. Very serious in all the different events. It builds character as you move through the different um, stages. All right, we can move to, back to the presentation. <clears throat> now, the secondary level. 
What are we seeing here? The support system for the student athlete to ensure that the student athlete experience is far more enriched, even become more complex. Because as you get older, the things you need to be successful, it's not going to be the same as for the earlier stages. All right, because why? The program is no more organized. It is more structured. The group of events now mimics what happens at the junior, youth and junior level, and of course, to some, ex of course, to some extent, the senior level. Now, <clears throat> I cannot overemphasize, especially at this level, because this is the level that prepares you for the most important one, the senior level. The school's administration. It is of paramount importance that schools administration understand the benefits, the importance of sport, because every single student that represents that institution is not only an ambassador, but every time they compete at the development meets, every time they represent the country, they are marketing school and country. They sell the school. And when, that's the reason why a, 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 a child here or in any Caribbean country or anywhere in the world would choose to go to certain schools in Jamaica because of the success of the program, because of the media um, coverage that they would have gained as a result of their success, as a result of the success of their program and everyone that works within the program. So schools administration play a key, key role in that success. Now, at most high schools, you have a head of department or HOD, right? Or you can have what you call a head of sport. The head of sport is the person who works with the principal of that institution. And also, it's not just the school administration, also includes the board. Because many school boards have a member of the board that is in charge of sports development. Right? That's how the success comes in. Of course, you have a team manager. As an head coach of St. Diego High School, we have what you call a manager's league. So to assist the team managers, we have student managers, and these are senior students, who assist in the day-to-day -day operation of the track and field program for the school. It's not only at St. Diego, but I'm just giving you the St. Diego aspect of it. Right? And they assist the team manager in ensuring all the things that needs to be done. Now, because training becomes more complex at this level, right? You're working at higher intensity. You're working with older students, students that are more mature than, of course, even if you do, no, no school have an in-house doctor, but you have an access to, just in case they are in an emergency situation. There is also, um, for example, for San Diego, anything happens, Spanish Town Hospital is just three, four minutes away straight to the emergency, just in case. All right, thanks be to God, we have not had any major issues. Of course, this each school has a nurse that n not only work during um, training time, but they are there right throughout the day. A sports massage therapist is key, is key for your child's recovery through your training. So when, you, when your child comes to Jamaica, they get all of that service at, especially at, yes, that's she's smiling, especially at, at that level, right? And of course, we know it doesn't matter what you do and how perfect your plan is, your program is, injuries will happen. As someone would say, I pong my toe, I buck my toe. Or you can just twist your ankle going down a step. You do your assessment at the doctor, the physiotherapist, does his assessment, and then, of course, the sports massage service. So all three assist in the process of rehabilitation, right? So you can start back training. The coaching staff now is more detailed, defined. You have a spin coach with probably an assistant spin coach. You have a throws coach with an assistant. You have a distance coach. You have a hurdles coach. You, in many of the schools, you have a strength and conditioning coach. So you have someone that works, because guess what? It is, you cannot achieve the level of success, even at an institution level, having one coach doing most of the work. So you need to have that distribution across. And remember, don't believe that it, <clears throat> one of the things we want to have is that it is, it is more, it is seen more of value, because many times you do it out of 
the love for the sport. It's not that you get the cash for it. The fact of the matter is we understand that if we're going to prepare better athletes, there are certain things that we have to do. So we talk about the, the nuances of the job. There are certain things that are unavoidable. If you're really going to do it the best way you can. Recruiters for internal and external. You'll find at the high school, um, at least 60% of your athletes are from external recruitment. But you have to recruit inside. So who are those recruiters? Or physical education teachers. Once there is a relationship between, because not every time the physical education teacher is the coach of the team, you can have a entirely, um, you can have a coaching staff that is that only come and coach. But that relationship is important because there's always a set of youngsters who you would not have seen whether they are shy or whatever the situation is, and you find them in P class when they're having fun or challenging each other. Like Bolt, friend challenged him, and that's how his situation started. So, yeah, that is done. Student welfare. Every student at the secondary level, just as our level, but this one is very important, has an academic responsibilities. Responsibilities, or therefore, you have systems in place. For example, at St. Diego, if you have extra class, you have to go. You have senior students that assist, right? You have extra classes that are paid for, for upper and lower schools for students who are not so strong academically. Because remember I told you, to compete at champs, you have to have X amount of subjects, at least at a certain percentage. So we, we always push for that, all right? And there's a system that helps. If there are personal issues, at home, we have guidance counselors. If it is to the extreme, then of course there are other things that, that has to be done to ensure that that student is able to incorporate socially before they can start to train again. Right? Um, the supporting staff, one of the things we do at St. Diego now, um, we're in a technological age. Parents are no more involved in the success and defeat of their child. One of the, one of the common things is that the parent only turn up for two reasons, for an award or if the child gets in trouble. But the thing is, having that sort of group in the parent is, has a direct connection to the institution, whether if there's an issue, re the student, if there's an academic issue, that before you are put on academic probation, you are forewarned, so you do the necessaries. You understand? So we, it's an holistic approach to the success of these, of these youngsters. So you might think about periodization, but I can tell you, these are some of the deterrents. It is not only the other things that affect your program, that young teenagers who are experiencing many hormonal cyclones, it's, it's not only because of that but it is also because of the other things that they have. So you have to ensure that you try your best to perfect the system so that they can achieve the very best they can. I cannot overemphasize the cohesive tripartite relationship between community, home community and other support groups for the child, working in tandem with the schools and the sports program. Once this relationship is perfect, perfected, and it continues to improve, then you start to create super athletes. They might not win everything, but I'm sure they're going to be better and better human beings. All right? Question. Oh, hold on. Uh, morning again. Um, I'm looking at the structure that you all have from cradle to to grieve. I love that. <laughs> and what I'm seeing is, is that you all are actually teaching your students that this is a business that you have to take seriously because I'm noticing that it's a Jamaican, it's more like a cult here mm -hmm. where you all groom these kids into a business-like manner in sport mm -hmm. so they are actually growing with the mentality 
that this is my this is my life and this is my finance and this is my way out all right so um a river is made of streams and tributaries what we do we create many opportunities for the skilled for the for the for the individual who is brilliant for the individual who is not so brilliant or better yet academically inclined we create avenues and sports is one through which we have many engineers doctors and so forth because when we talk about the socio-economical background of many of our athletes ever in every country in the caribbean we face that it is an avenue um, I can share some of my experience um, as a coach before a head coach. Um, you have many multimillionaires that I have coached. They got the philosophy. They are doing exceptionally well, many of whom are um, at Budapest now. I mean, yes. And you also have others who are transforming our nation in other areas. And this sort of preparation is not just for, to be an athlete. It is a way of life. It is to prepare you for life, right? And the more they are reinforced, the more that, we talk about the orbital method, the more that support group reinforces the same thing. It helps you because there are many distracting noises that cause an individual to be a lesser version of themselves. So the objective in trying to achieve a greater throughput at the basic school level at the primary level, at the secondary level, ultimately gives a society an opportunity to prosper, to grow, to be an example, and also to be a standard. All right? I love that question. So <clears throat> the secondary level, we have the Jamaica Athletics Administrative Association, the J3As. Many of you are familiar with it. Excellent. Um, the most successful sporting organization in Jamaica. Please bear that in mind. They play a key role, just like the entries, right? Now, they have what we call development meets. And just as all you have the others, it, com it comes in numbers. They say the more the merrier. They either organize or they approve or sanction meets. Now, in Jamaica, you're going to have many meat organizers. So the meat, most of the meats are done by meat organizers, sanctioned by the J3As. These meat organizers must ensure that the facility where they're having the meat meet a certain standard, that the necessary personnel are at that track meet to ensure everything as best as possible runs seamlessly from start to finish of the competition. Now, by saying that, it sounds nice. I'm not saying that it is perfect, but we continue to perfect the craft. And of course, each meet is evaluated. Am I catering for the group of athletes that are coming in? Am I providing a balance between the different groups of events that are offered at each meet. Because remember, on a Saturday, you might have three, four meets at different locations around the island. Because it becomes a costly venture for every school, for example, to be traveling from one end to the other end of the island. However, we try to ensure that in each county, we have a track and field meet, right? Naturally, schools will decide which one to go. It's not that you're going to go to everyone. Sometimes you want to go to a low-key meet. Sometimes you want to go to the most competitive one because that's how you match up with your rival team because you're preparing to destroy them at the championship. All right? Now, the sports program structure. We also have regional associations. So remember, this is similar to what happens at the primary level, but of course, far more athletes. Our organization committee. So we have the Eastern Secondary School Sports Association. They are in charge of the Eastern Championship. We have the County of Cornwall Athletic Association. They are in charge of Western Championship. We have the Central. Now, I left the two most powerful for last. 
the two most competitive. Most of the champions normally come from them. The Central Athletic Championship Organizing Committee, they are in charge of Central Championship. The, for the past, for the past 20 years, <laughs> 20 years, the national champion are the champion school for females <laughs> come from the central, right? And then, of course, for the corporate era development meet, the champion normally comes from that. Because here's what. In Jamaica, there are two high schools that have a synthetic track, Kingston College and Jamaica College, all right? Doesn't mean that all the fastest athletes come from those schools because there's always a benefit to train and grass and move to the synthetic track. All right? Calabar. Oh, yes, and Calabar. I'm sorry. It's actually three. Three. So it's, it, so it was, right. It's Calabar first, JC and, KC and then JC. So we have three. Can you imagine? Now, the, insti the association that is directly in charge of our Boys and Girls Championship is the Inter-Secondary School Sports Association. They are in charge of sports at the secondary level, all sports, all right? They ensure that all competitions for all levels for football, cricket, track and field, everything um, takes place. Of course, for champs, now you remember the interview at the basic school level where you, we, the gentleman talk about preparing them for the next level. Now, our team selected for champs goes through a ranking system. Before, it was making the qualifying time, and then you probably can carry 100 and an athletes to champs. Now, it's a ranking system that is, mimics what happens at our youth, junior, and senior level. So they are already prepared and understand what it means to train and being in the ranking system. Um, of course, at the last champs, we had 88 schools for boys, 91 for girls. Remember, we have single gender and co -ed institutions. Catering for age group of 12 to 9, and this championship lasts for five days. Just imagine, at this level, Yes, it's a big thing. Sponsorship for teams, sponsorship for champs, and the whole spectacle. I cannot really calculate how many millions that amount to. But just remember, champs would have cost over $100 million. Yes, over 200? Right, over $200 million. Jamaican dollars. It's still a lot of money, a whole heap. And it would not have included the expenses per, in, per school. All schools from the rural areas would have booked an hotel or a location in Kingston for five days, transportation, food, 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 food. And let me tell you, boy, athletes have a different stomach. <laughs> the, cost, the cost per institution is a whole lot. So understand. If your investment, and I, I would love for everyone to process this, if your investment is big. We spoke about it yesterday, Mr. Angus, right? Yeah, if your investment is immense, it's big, it's a whole lot of money, then of course the results cannot be, be. So if you invest poorly, a little money, you cannot get the same amount as the man who is investing more. Bear in mind, however, most high school programs work on a shoestring budget. So we're still not where we want to be yet. Now, I know our major interest. Um, oh, there's a question? Excellent. I Hi, good that. morning again. Good morning. I have a couple questions, but yes. I think they relate to what you just said. Yeah. Is it five consecutive days or held five days over a period of time? So we start Tuesday and the, ch the champion is determined on Saturday. Okay. So teachers, students, everyone is 
given permission to be away from yes. school for four days? Yes. Okay. All right, so here's what. Here's what. Um, all right, let me explain it this way. Yes, please. Um, for and some, is the stadium full on those five days? Those are what I want to know. Um, and the audience is comprised from the of third, whom? From the, third, the number increase, especially when you have like the 100 meter finals, the relay finals, and so forth. Saturday is where you have most of the finals. That is when the championship, the champions are in school, male and female is, um, is um, right. You're going to have that stadium jam pack. The Friday, it's going to be full. So you're not going to have the stadium full the first day. But you're going to have an in significant increment per day up to the final day. Mm. Mm. Right, so. Excellent. So, hold on, hold on, hold on. I, I told you, I told you this is exciting matter. No. The early days, the major responsibility would be with your head of sports, the coaching staff, and um, other key members of the institution that works with the team. Closer to like Thursday, Friday, Saturday, as um, Ms. Henry would have um, alluded, schools come in numbers with their banners, with their flags, with their cheers, with their vuvuzela. I don't know who created that. <laughs> it is at such decibel, you, you cannot even hear yourself. However, thanks to World Cup, where was it in Ghana? Brazil, no, Ghana. South Africa, oh my God, they, they started that. Your brothers and sisters started it. However, it, it, it creates um, an ambience where, when you hear it, that amount of experience you'd have gained from the basic school level coming through the primary, it's just a different thing. So you are not fearful. You are more a fierce competitor whenever you reach that level. Go ahead. Um, does the school have to write to get permission to allow teachers and students to be in the stadium? No. <laughs> um, colleagues, colleagues, look, look, colleagues. The school, school ends half day, in the latter part. All right. Remember, remember, teachers also have casual leaves. All right, and they play a key role, supporting. Let me tell you, schools come with their bands in it. Most schools have a music department. And every pan, sorry, every drum and all those things. And yes, the, they have the pad cover side that comes to. They all come to celebrate. That's the reason why it's the biggest event of its kind for, for secondary schools in the world. Yes, sir. Yes, um, colleagues, I, I, I want you to understand. It, it's probably a culture shock. but. But um, the, the body that runs the, the school sport, the, the, it's all principals, all principals. Now, the regular day-to-day -day activity of the schools that are competing, there is enough teachers and staff to man the, the rest of the operation. But as Mr. Gale alluded to, the sports department with which usually some school, depending on how active they are in the in the in this in the participation of, of, of um, the championship, would their team leader, their HOD, two or three, the support staff from that, and so the the rest of the school, the math teacher would not be there, even though at this particular time some of them <coughs> send in a casual leave that suggests that. There the might be, be a chance, <laughs> but, but I am just saying. But for the for the for, for the for the major operation, the school still functions. So I don't want it to be seen that it is like yes. And what no no no. And what um, Miss Henry alluded to in the corporate area, because some schools are closer to the to the stadium, the, the marching and drums and that the the students the, the, the march from there. 
you know so so and and it is it is really i tell you something no matter how you watch it on youtube and no matter how you watch it on the yeah, zoom yeah. or whatever it is <clears throat> nothing compares you need to be in the stadium to really understand what is really happening and i can guarantee you if you're going to the stadium on a saturday bless god from out of zion it is another experience yes thank you thank you very much sir and just one thing our our jamaican diaspora they are it's serious business especially for past students from some of the rival schools they would be at champs for the week if it means that they have to be in the bleachers they have to be inside the stadium so it is heavily supported also by our private sector and of course our diaspora coming investing spending etc i just like to add to, to that mr gill um because when i was up there we see at the pegasus yeah and you saw people throughout the day mm -hmm. so i i met this guy at breakfast and she so asked me you know we're we having conversation but when i listen to his accent he said training again so i said training what are you doing here so he said he never missed champs he had a with a bunch of about five of them and they come down from canada every year for champs you know so i asked him i said so you came for one or two days he said no we've been here since monday champs are tuesday and they had their tickets they had their mm. banners and so i asked him i said so as a trinidad and we are back in uh, yeah, he had back in you know, you know, <laughs> you know right but he was flying out this sunday because he had to go to work the Monday, back to, he had to go back to work. So he took a week off from work to go to Champs. And um, when, you, when we, we listen, I've, I've been listening, right? Um, when we listen, and I've been listening to, to from, I mean, I've heard this all before, right? right? But to it at home is a different thing. We have a lot of work to do here in Trinidad. And it's not so much that what we are hearing, the, the, the bulk of what we are hearing, you know, is different, you know. The, the biggest difference here is culture, right? The biggest difference here is how we focus on what we focus on, right? Because all the structures, the districts, we have those structures, right? But it's, it's who's in charge of putting things on. And, and, and that's, that's part of the, the, the issue because I can tell you, uh, for me, President of Secondary School Track and Field, that that I see there is where we want to go. But we hit blocks all the time. Right? You try to do this, you get a block. You try to do that, you get a block. Um, can I say something? Sure. I started at Eden Allen. That's the school that lost the female championship. Yes, I was there. I saw that. <laughs> and I can tell you, the current head coach, the first time he went to the principal with an invoice <laughs> for some sneakers <laughs> for training, the, the, the principal at the time, a gentleman that I have a lot of respect for, and I'm happy he did what he did. <laughs> he took the invoice and threw it out and said to him, go and find sponsors. I'm not telling you that, but here's what. When I learned of that experience and the new principals came, I said to him, his name is Mr. Dyke. I said, Mr. Dyke, when you don't get what you want sometimes, you have to find creative and smart ways. Because we are teachers, you know. How many times we meet a child that doesn't participate, but we find a way because we control the process. I mean, of course, for the fact that it's an adult, it might take a little bit more time, but it's important. As coaches and teachers, we have to be tolerant and patient, right? We are patient, and even as parents. But here's what happened. Sometimes you have to get them on your side by educating them. They have many times those that think they have the best idea for sports or the country are those with the least experience. And you have to educate them. Instead of getting mad, educate them. Because let me tell you something. That principal did not miss a penalty. That principal did not miss a chance. That principal became one of the most influential 
and supportive principal for the sports program because he understood that what was being done wasn't only for track and field glory. We spoke about the, the health benefits of physical activities. We realize, of course, that by virtue of engaging in physical activity, you become more alert. You retain information longer, etc., And you become a more dynamic person, right? So sometimes that's what needs to be done. Maybe one person can't do it, but when the success, let me use another example. Stephen Francis in 99. When most of our student athletes went abroad to study, and hopefully, if they continue in the sport, regardless of the success we were having at Champs, um, a smaller number uh, or throughput from the, that cohort would be able to come back to compete for Jamaica and actually medal. So what did he do? He sold his car. He did something that no one else thought of or thought that was possible. And that's part of the reason why he has become the most successful and consistent um, coach in our, in, our, in, our, um, in our success in track and field, yet. So sometimes you have to make the sacrifice. Even if you feel like complaining sometimes, make the sacrifice. It is possible. And it's part of what we're trying to do because there's a lot to learn from you. Don't believe that we are perfect. We still have a whole lot to learn. Because when you satisfy, then everyone else will pass you. The younger ones will pass you. Those who want to be better will pass you. Give an example, and I don't want to drift too much. Is 10 seconds an impossible feat? No. And don't we have more countries running sub-10 than never did before? What? have they been doing? You think it was just that Jamaica was special? No. They are learning and understanding what needs to be done because human performance from a physical standpoint requires consistency. Right? It is not something you approach from an emotional standpoint, from an egotistic standpoint. It has to be supported by science. You have to analyze, you have to feel, and you have to go again and go again and go again until you get it right. And notice, every country that started to run sub-10, or achieve athletes running sub-10, have any of those countries stopped and you don't see that mean again? It means that they have, underst they have come to an understanding as what is required. Because remember, when Jesse Owen did nine, I'm sorry, 10.36, <laughs> nobody thought that it was possible. No, we're at 9.58 and 19.19 and 43.03. Where next will we go? And it might not be from any of these countries. All right? Remember, we spoke about the um, motor performance. That's genetics. It's part of the reason why there's a particular group of us with a level of melanin that continues to do that because we were disobedient. We, we, in, in, we're talking about the historical part, Sir Angus, right? All right. Now, I know your interest is more so from grassroots to secondary, but listen to me. There was a time when our secondary system was exceptional. We were producing athletes, producing. But at the senior level, the return was poor. So when we started work, doing more locally, we started to get greater results. I'm saying that to say this. We cannot stop at secondary. It has to be the complete product. And it can't be that most of your best talent are left at the mercy of a coach in a system that is coaching to keep his job and might not take in consideration aspects of the longevity of the, of the athletes that come in the program. You have some exceptional coaches. You have some world-renowned coaches. But also remember, if the product is going to be yours, you need to have some at home. Huh? The curry you have here 
It's not the curry, it's, don't taste the same way abroad. You could, you could talk about it a little more. The only way it tastes good is when you're at home. So at the senior level, we have the club president. You have the club president at the senior level. Key, the team manager. Everything that has to do with logistics, traveling, um, support of the athlete and so forth. A team manager play a key, key, key role. Every single athlete you have seen made a medal podium. It's with exceptional management. The club, naturally, if you go on social media, every club that is represented at the World Championship has their page. They have at least one picture with members from their club that are representing their country there. So marketing is important because that's how you're going to get athlete, not just locally, but from other, um, other countries who believe that club is the club that I want to continue or further my development um, as a professional athlete. It's important. You are training at higher intensity. You are doing more rigorous training programs now. Naturally, you have to have a doctor in your pocket. Many times, we spoke about Usain because of his scoliosis situation. He had to go to Germany because of certain medical issues. The level of technology they have here and know-how was not um, in Jamaica. Therefore, he had to go there because, of course, we have something called the human tech our system, and we have other systems that ultimately helps the individual to recover faster or deal with certain um, issues that they might have um, as it relates to, um, for example, their alignment. So, and also a sports massage service, a physiotherapist is essential. You might have a chiropractor, a manual. Now, a manual is someone who offer a multiplicity of services. You understand? They might be a chiropractor. They do acupuncture and all of that. They are a physiotherapist, etc. They would have done that group of scientists that helps them to give you total care based on your need as, as an athlete. Um, the coaching staff, of course, even more strategic than you would have it for the secondary level. Because remember, at this level, you are specialized. You're working on a smaller group of events that are interrelated. And as a result, that knowledgeable and experienced coaching staff is important. Athlete welfare, please remember, even though you're a senior athlete, there are always things that you need assistance with, separate and apart from your family that comes from the supporting staff. Um, you might have a mentor. Um, you might have a psychologist or someone that helps to guide you through different phases um, of your life or different stages of training, or especially when you are tapering, preparing for your main competition. And of course, you're always going to have recruiters that have that linkage between um, different sporting groups and uh, certainly at the primary level. So even though you're marketing, it doesn't mean that athletes are going to run to you. You have to build relationships in order to achieve success at this level. And all of that supports the athlete now, the professional athlete. The question I ask, who among you is going to be the Stephen Francis, the Maurice Wilson, the Glenn Mills, and I don't want to forget any of our um, astute and outstanding coaches, but I'll just use those three. Who is going to be the next one to ensure that there's a bridge locally between the secondary and the senior level? We have a big stadium here. How much does this stadium contribute to our senior development? We only have Charles here for seniors. I know, for example, Stadium East um, at our national stadium, many of our clubs train there at different times. It is heavily used. And, and there are other areas. They use Jamaica College just the same for a senior program. You understand? Because remember, the very day, the very day you achieve success through this venture, where you can say from there to the senior level, we have done this. It is going to give your country a different feeling. It's going to be different. It is going to inspire. Let me tell you, when Mr. Francis started, Mr. Mills started, 
it inspired everybody else. So now we have more senior clubs. In fact, only senior clubs. Any other club for juniors is probably in football. So the success of our track and field is laid on the backs of our teachers, coaches, administrators, sponsors. That is what has worked for us. Right? I'm just sharing that is what has worked for, for Jamaica. All right? So let's move on now to senior and elite, of course. We know the J Jamaica Athletic Administrative Association. They provide development needs for unattached. You might not be a part of a club for clubs and institutions. All right? Now, and of course, you have your national junior and senior championship that are that is run by the, the National Association. Let's move on. All right, so now we, remember, we spoke about the team. So we have spoken about the system. We have spoken about the, the, the coaching staff that is essential to, in, in terms of carrying out that plan, ensuring that that plan work. Now, sports facilities. Now, what you will see at the different levels is that our preschool students, most school, all school preschools, depending on the location, whether it's the in rural or in, in, in the city, they have a multi-purpose court. A multi-purpose court that is used for a multiplicity of activities, sports related and so forth. They have a grass field or a grass track. That grass field or grass track might not be, excuse me, the official size of a track. Whether it is 150 meters around, whether it is just one curve, like a 150 meter curve here, whether it is 200 meters, 250, 300 meters, they might not have it or have access to it. They have that because part of their preparation for the basic school and primary championship, naturally, when it comes to that period, they mark the field, you start to learn how to run in a lane, how not to step on the line, how to do the different things as it relates to the starts and so forth. But the preparatory schools, remember, it's private. Um, similar situation, they'd have a multipurpose court, a grass field, and also a grass track. So you're seeing here that most of the training takes place on grass, right? And we have, we have some schools with some exceptional surfaces, grass, <laughs> that, <laughs> that we have the official size um, field that we have many of the development meets on. Primary just the same, but because they are a little bit more rigorous, quite a few primary schools have access to sporting facilities. And finally, our secondary and senior level have similar facilities at their disposal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, so <clears throat> um, I'm just wondering if we want to take a pause. Oh, it's, it's not five, it's 10 minutes you normally take, right? Right, right? And then we come back and then we move into other aspects because we're gonna talk about the, the, the competition timeline. How many months and just to go through that idea as to how we, we structure what we do and the things that we focus on, all right? So we can take a break, we can interact a little bit. You can ask questions to members of the team and um, we come back in a few. <laughs>